Greetings everyone and welcome back to the bench. In the last video, I kind of failed because my intentions were to show the differences between a counterfeit TDA 2050 and an authentic chip. And well, as you saw, <laughs> the supposed fakes I bought turned out to be authentic. I purchased chips in the past off of eBay probably like three times and they were always counterfeits. And I shot a video many years ago demonstrating the differences between an authentic TDA 2050 and a counterfeit one. And I didn't have the audio analyzer at the time, but it was pretty easy to show that the counterfeit was really underperforming. And I'll put a link in the description to that video if you want to have a look at it. But in the last video, I went and purchased the chips off of eBay from some random seller. The prices were really low, like $3.50 for a couple chips. I figured out yeah, no way they're going to be authentic. They were branded UTC, although that company is a good company. Counterfeiters will print anything on the chips to make a buck. So I wholly expected them to be counterfeit, and well, I was wrong. Apparently you can get the UTC chips at a very good price. Some people are claiming under a dollar a pop if you buy enough of them. And while I was disappointed that I didn't show the performance of a counterfeit chip, I'm so grateful that such a good performing chip is available to the DIY community today. Like I said before, it's my favorite audio amplifier chip. While it's no powerhouse, it's good for 20, 25, maybe even 30 watts of power. The distortion performance is excellent. It's, you know, it's like a little hi-fi chip for the money, and it's so simple and easy to use. So in this video, I dug around in my junk box, and I found actual counterfeit TDA 2050 chip that I purchased years ago. And I just wanted to put on the analyzer and see how it performs. So right here is the counterfeit chip. They usually brand them ST, and you can hardly even tell what that says. Uh, the part number labeling looks good. You can tell it has the thin legs and the uh, side scoops are up higher on the body. This is the authentic chip. Thicker legs, the scoops are lower. Okay, so what I'll do is solder this counterfeit chip on the board and run it on the analyzer and see what we get. Okay, the chip is installed and mounted to the heat sink board and making sure that it is the proper board because in the last video I picked up the wrong board. They look identical. I was taking all these measurements with the wrong board and I had to go back and do it all over again. Okay, what I call the kickoff measurement here where I just measure the uh, distortion at 1 kilohertz, 1 watt, 8 ohm load, and uh, counterfeit chip, 0.002%. So it's going to be even better. Uh, we're not starting off so well. Frequency response is fine. I mean, it's a solid state chip. It's not really the chip that defines that mainly the external components. And we're like one fifth of a dB down at 20 Hertz up here at 20 K, like one tenth, pretty much exactly like the TDA 2050, but you know, we're set up on the same board with the same capacitors. So it's, it's going to be the same. The results are in. Very, very interesting results here, folks. Look at the distortion performance across the power band, at least before clipping. Just like we saw, it was well below 0.01%. Really surprising performance. But uh, here's where it gets weird. Well, first the blue line, which is the 8 ohm load, and uh, it seems fairly normal. We hit clipping here, and then we go above 0.1 at what looks to be around 17 watts or so, 
and we go above one around 19, 18 or 19, that might be more like 16. Kind of wish this thing, you could get more precise measurements, but uh, you know, I don't know how to do that. No matter how far I zoom in, it doesn't give me any hash marks or anything, but yeah, it's not doing quite as well as the TDA 2050 or the UTC version. Okay, here's the weird one. 4 ohms distortion performance is just excellent. Almost load invariant. It's you know, it's down near the 8 ohm line. But it went wonky. At 2 3 4 5 a little over 6 watts distortion shot up. Then it went backwards. You know, we're near 10% here and it's doing some wonky stuff here. Yeah, this chip does not like 4 ohm loads at the uh, plus or minus 20 volt supply. It's like a current limit kicked in and um, it's doing some wonky stuff up here. So yeah, it's definitely not an authentic chip. But really strange performance. I wasn't expecting the distortion to be so low. But as I saw in my uh, test I did several years ago, the output folds up pretty bad with uh, heavier loads. Here's the authentic TDA2050, which was about the same with the UTC version. You can see here the 8 ohm load crossed at around 17, 18 watts. And we're above 20 watts, close to 21 watts. And of course at 4 ohms, we're above 30 watts here at the 0.1 line and like 37 watts. Where of course the fake chip just folded up. The actual TDA chips can handle the 4 ohm loads pretty well at plus minus 20 volts. So I did another test with the fake TDA2050 and I lowered the supply voltage to 30 volts. In other words, a split supply of plus or minus 15. And with the 4 ohm load, yeah, now it's not wigging out like it did before. So we're crossing the 0.1 line at, that's probably 14 watts and 16 watts at the 1% line. So it seems to have some sort of current limit. When you're running it at such a high supply voltage, you're going to get a lot more thermal dissipation. It might be a thermal type limiting going on. When I crack the chip open, they use a much smaller die size than the authentic chips. So, you know, you're going to run into thermal issues a lot quicker. So I'm guessing that's what's going on. Okay, now we look at the frequency band versus distortion. And unlike the authentic chips, it was more flat at lower frequencies where the Counterfeit chip has kind of a rise. You can see it's much higher, you know, approaching the 0.1 line. Where, as I say, the other chips were much better. And you can see it dips down to its low levels again. And, of course, as frequency increases, it rises up close to the 0.1 line. One thing I'm not clear about with the Quant Asylum it's not plotting what I'm measuring. So I ran the test a couple times and I'm getting down to 0.0027% for example and you know you can see the numbers and the frequency as it's running the test. So when it plots I should be down towards this line here. In the actual plot is up here so you know I don't know what's going on I tried a couple things I don't get a different result maybe it's a bug with the plotting software but you know these lines should be lower than what they're showing because you know with the 4 ohm load this thing's showing right at 0 0.01 when it was way down here so maybe somebody who knows more about the quant asylum can tell me but like I say what it's measuring and what it's plotting are not the same. In summary, 
I wasn't expecting that distortion performance. Really low, about the same, maybe even a little bit less than the authentic chips. That could be down to the way I wired it. I made sure this wire was away from the power cables. I found that just the way you route the wires can affect the distortion, but I'm not going to go remeasure the other chips. I'll just say they're in the same ballpark, and that is impressive. However, this chip just does not handle low impedance loads. It folds up at the higher supply voltage. Like I said, they use a smaller die, and I think maybe thermal issues come into play there. Reducing the supply voltage reduces that thermal stress issue, and we got better measurements that way. However, at a lower voltage, you're not going to get as much output. So, yeah, it's a usable chip. I'm not really for counterfeits because it hurts the companies that make the authentic parts. But again, you know, I was just curious of how they perform. That'll do it for this one. Thanks for watching.